Hello, this is a quick talk entitled How to Get the Most Out of a Professional Body. Uh, my name is Dr Hannah D. I'm a senior lecturer at Aberystwyth University uh, and I'm also <coughs> a member of BCS since 2006 and a member of the BMVA since 2001 and I have also been in a number of other professional bodies over time. So I was in IET for a couple of years, was in ACM for a couple of years, was in IEEE, the Institute for Electronic and Electrical Engineers, for a couple of years, um, a couple of times, I think. So uh, I've done quite a few professional body things, and I can tell you a little bit about how to get the most out of them. But first off, what is a professional body? So... Um, professional associations, sometimes called professional bodies, professional organisations, professional societies, this text is straight from Wikipedia, I confess, um, is uh, they are organisations which look after a particular profession. Um, and by profession, we mean a set of jobs which have got like a barrier to entry to a certain extent. So uh, with some professions like medicine, you actually have to be in a professional association in order to practice. So you get people chucked out of medicine, they're chucked out of the professional body. That's how the um, gatekeeping occurs there. And the technical world is not at that stage, so it's not the case that you have to be a member of a professional body to write decent computer programs. But the professionalisation of computing is something that's very interesting. And professional bodies do do some really useful stuff around organising, uh, advocating on behalf of the profession and also considering the, prof the, the public interest, particularly around things like uh, ethics and so on. So uh, professional bodies are kind of important across all sorts of different professions. Um, if we look at the kinds of professional bodies or the types of professional bodies that you, uh, computer people, might join, um, the BCS used to stand for British Computer Society but they decided that computers was not a word they wanted to be associated with for some reason, and they're now the BCS, the Chartered Institute for IT, um, and the BCS doesn't stand for anything. Um, ACM is the Association for Computing Machinery, and that's like the US version of the BCS, really. Uh, that's probably not the only thing they do, but they are very US-centric. They have chapters in other parts of the world, uh, but so does the BCS. Um, ACM put on a lot of conferences and have a lot of journals as well. So my me my membership of the ACM has been to do with specific conferences. Same with IEEE, so the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers is uh, an institute which um, puts on some pretty major conferences in my field and um, IET also puts on some pretty major conferences in my field. And my membership of all three of those, so ACM, IEEE, IET, has been to do with specific conferences. Uh, often you'll find that the fee to enter a conference as a member is a greater discount on the non-member fee than joining is. So it's cheaper to join and then pay the member's fee than it is to pay the non-member's fee. So you join for a year and then there you go. Uh, top tip. Um, if you become a real specialist, so if you end up doing a really... Um, specialist kind of area, so I do computer vision. There are smaller groups that look at very uh, narrow thematic areas, so the BMVA, British Machine Vision Association, uh, cost me about 25 quid a year, I think, can't remember. Um, but that has a magazine and puts on conferences and stuff. And there you go. Um, what can you get out of a professional body? Uh, lots of meetings, uh, you can go to talks, get status so as I mentioned before some organizations some some professions require you to have status but there is a, a level of gatekeeping around the titles you can use so if you are a member of BCS you can put MBCS after your name if you're a chartered IT professional um, that involves jumping through more qualification hoops and more um, proof that you're able to do it and that gets you to put CITP after your name and if you're a fellow of the BCS again higher bar to entry, you get to put FBCS after your name. Uh, as I mentioned on the last slide, uh, a lot of these organisations give you cheap conference fees um, or put on free conferences to members. 
Um, they might offer mentoring, so if you wanted to have a mentor mentee relationship with someone, they can facilitate that. Um, there are newsletters, magazines, so for BCS it's IT Now, which comes through your letterbox uh, and contains useful stories about tech. And they also offer qualifications. Um, other things you could get out of it, I'd say the more involved you are, the better the professional bodies look on the CV. So uh, you could talk at events, uh, you can write for their magazines, you could contribute to planning committees, you could contribute to committees in general, um, you can organise events and you can write books and stuff like that. There's a publishing arm. Um, and all of these could be lines on your CV. That it all could be contributions you are making to the professional world and that is a useful thing to have on the CV. Um, so the more you put in within reason, the more you get out with professional bodies. If all you do is join and then do nothing, the joining fee will feel like a waste of money and it probably will be a waste of money. Um, if you join and sign up for everything and do everything, be warned that volunteer work, and this is volunteer work, can be frustrating. So not everybody will value your time and not everybody will do what they say they will. Um, that is, of course, true of all work, not just volunteer work. But somehow volunteer work feels worse, right? Because if you're giving up your own time to do something, you expect people to kind of pay attention to that. Um, the BCS in particular has regional groups and specialist groups. Specialist groups are like thematic groups. BCS Women is a specialist group. Um, other specialist groups, there's a list on the web which I have behind here. Um, so this is the list of specialist groups. There's lots of health ones. Um, there's project management groups, information management groups. Uh, future of computing, that's where you'll find artificial intelligence, uh, human computer interaction, stuff like that. Um, business and consultancy, there's software development groups, um, there's learning and development groups. Under ethics, law and diversity in IT, there is BCS Women, Digital Divide, Embrace, looking at more racial diversity in tech, um, Neurodiversity, looking at neurodiverse individuals in tech, and Pride, uh, looking at LGBTQIA people in tech. Um, so this is the kind of where you'll find the groups that are looking at that kind of stuff. The other thing that BCS offers that's probably worth mentioning is there's a, an office in London which BCS members can use. Um, so that's my talk. Hopefully didn't take much more than 10 minutes. Um, go to meetings. These are my top tips. Go to meetings, uh, local branch meetings and specialist group meetings. Talk to people, so actually have the conversations. If you want to mentor, join an organisation that can offer that. So there are organisations that can help you get someone to have that mentor-mentee support. Um, if you've got time, join a committee. So if you're on a committee, you can get involved in what talks they put on and what directions they go on and what events they run. Uh, BCS Women is always looking for more people, um, but your local branch will also be looking for more people. Um, you can volunteer to speak or to organise an event and you might be surprised how many people will hear what you want to say, want to hear what you want to say. Um, anyone presenting a poster here has got something to talk about, right? Um, but finally, and perhaps most importantly, uh, don't overstretch yourself. Um, do consider what you're volunteering for and what the time constraints you have are and whether you can fit it in. But I think... It can look really good on the CV and it can be a means of networking and getting to know people that you would not otherwise get to know and learning about tech that you might not otherwise get to know about. Um, it can give you real breadth in your understanding of the discipline and options for talking, which is always good. There you go, less than 10 minutes. <laughs>